rule is actually composition of functions. It's when you have functions composed inside other functions. That's why we learned composition of functions in 30 dash one. You know we learn f of g of x and g of f of x. So if I have a function, let me write. Why did it stop writing? I don't know. So if I have like f of g of x, like fog, that's the same as you just write it in order, right? f of g of x. So chain rule happens when you actually have a composition of a function, when you have a function embedded in another function. We've done some chain rules already because I feel like doing it without chain rules is just kind of silly. Chain rules are like all of derivative life, you know? So if I gave you... Um, why? We're going to do the derivative of this. Uh, d over dx of, I won't do y. So d over dx of x cubed minus 4x plus 1. To the 100. So you tell me what would be the f of x function actually in this one. What would be the f of x function? What is the f in this? If this is f of g of x, this is the g of x. x cubed plus minus 4x plus 1 is the g of x, correct? What is the f? x yeah. to the power of 100. x to the power of 100. That's all the f is. The f is just x to the 100. The g is what's sitting inside. So g of x would be x cubed minus 4x plus 1. f of x is just x to the 100, and we're putting g in for all the x's. Ready? It's just f of g of x. So whenever you have an embedded f of g of x, what do you do? So if I want to find the derivative of this, I would go f prime of g of x. Remember, we just leave the inside. And then we chain the derivative of the inside behind it. Remember, we did this already. So you'd actually multiply behind by the derivative of the inside. Because we work our way from outside in. And no matter what, when you're doing the derivative of anything, you have to derive everything. So we derive the outside, then we derive the inside, and that's how you get those chains behind. So whenever you have a, one equation embedded inside of another, or f of g of x, you have to do chain rules. Sometimes you have f of g of h of x. Sometimes you have more than one embedded. Okay? So what would I do? I'd do the outside first, the derivative of f. The f was x to the 100, correct? So what's the derivative of x to the 100? 100, x to the 99. We just have to rewrite this as our x. So it would be 100 x cubed minus 4x plus 1 to the 99. And then I ask myself, have I done the derivative of everything? No. no, so I cannot stop. I'm not allowed to stop until I've done the derivative of everything. So I get a chain behind of the derivative of g. Do you see that's why we multiply by g prime? So now I get 3x squared minus 4. Done. They'll often rewrite this as 100, bracket, 3x squared minus 4, bracket, x cubed minus 4x plus 1 to the 99. They often write the 99 one last. It's a commutative property. It doesn't matter. You're right. They're right. Everyone's right. Okay? We don't have to rewrite this. Just know that those are the same. So if they take that and move it to the front behind 100, it's exact same. It's multiplication. Okay? That was number one. Number two, determine the derivative. So I can go d over dx of a function. That means find the derivative of it. Or I can say determine the derivative of y equals cos. Now, every single trig we've done so far was cos x, cosecant x, cotan x, negative cosecant x. It's always been just something x, correct? But now with chain rule, I can go cos of something, and all I do is I do the derivative of that cos, just like normal, followed by a chain of what's in the inside of the bracket. That's it. That's all it ends up doing. So I have cos of 3x minus pi over 4. Now, how do we determine if it's a chain rule? Well, we can have a g and an x. It's a chain rule, right? What's the g of x in this, or what's the f of x in this equation? It's cos x, correct? And what's sitting in the bracket is the g. 
So it's 3x minus 4. So if I have an f of g of x, I have to do chain rule every single time. So y prime would be, what's the derivative of cos? Negative something, because when I take the derivative of anything, yeah, any, anything with a c, it's negative. So the negative sign, rewrite what's inside. Now a ton of people don't treat this like a chain rule. They'll go negative sign and then do the derivative of the inside right away. You can't. It's a chain rule, right? You do the derivative of the outside, you say, I'm not done. And you follow behind with the chain of the inside. So what's the derivative of 3x minus pi over 4? 3. It's just 3. So it's an aggressive bracket. <laughs> so you can leave it like that, or they'll often bring the 3 in front, and they'll write it like this. Me too. So... I always want you to understand different methods of what you can talk, because I don't know what properties are, right? I, and honestly, on the AP, they can write it in any form they want. So if I give you this, which is just a d over dx, correct? d over dx. It could be d over dt, but then the variables would be t's, correct? All it means is to find the derivative of that. We agree? The next one says determine the derivative of y equals cos. So they could write it as y prime, or they could write it as dy over d with respect to whatever the heck variable I used. So dy over dx would be this one. But if that was a t, it'd be dy over dt. dy over dt, you could set equal to because, or dy over dx. You can, so if it's d over dx of this, you're saying the derivative of this is equal to that. There's nothing else written here, correct? But y prime can just be replaced with dy over dx. So we can go dy over dx equal, and we get our answer. Because y prime and dy over dx are interchangeable. They're the same thing. They're just different notations made by two different calculus people, and they never threw out either of them, and now we have two. And depending on who you have for a prop, some like the y primes, some like the dy over dx. So I'm doing both, so that neither, no one is less efficient, depending on who you get. Plus, AP exam can use them interchangeably. All right? Okay, three. Uh, find y prime if y equals e to the x squared minus 4, which just so you know, this is where we've already done chain rule because I forced you to learn the whole thing instead of just e to the x, which is in the lesson, which is annoying because e to the x is not just e to the x as a derivative because it is, you memorize it. e to the x is the derivative of what it is because whenever you have a numerical base to a variable exponent, you rewrite it, ln the base times the derivative of the exponent. Every time you have an e and you, or a 4 or a pi to a variable exponent, you're doing chain rule. Every time, it's a chain rule question. So in that lesson, it's sheer memorized, and I don't like that. I don't want sheerly memorized. I want you to know that when you have a numerical base, an e or a pi or a 4 to a variable exponent, you're doing chain rule. You're rewriting it. You're logging the base. You're multiplying by the derivative. You will have three chains at the very least. Because what could they do? They could put a product rule in your exponent. Then you do rewrite log of the base. Derivative of the exponent would have to just be a product rule, right? So that's why we have to know what we're, when we see stuff, we need to know what we need to do. Yeah. So this one, my y prime would be rewrite it. First chain. Ln of the base, which is ln of e, which is just log base e of e. We agree? And what's log base e of e? One. Because if you have the old calculator, you spot it. So ln of e is log base e of e. And based on our formula sheet up there, or if you have the old calculator, the only way you could type it in is by putting the log on the bottom, correct? And log e, anything divided by itself is just 1, and so that's why log e is 1, right? That is why it is 1. Every single time it will be 1. We rewrite it, and I always write log e to prove point, because if it's not e, it's pi, it's 4, it's whatever, you're going to have log of that, okay? So I never skip this step because I don't want you to skip it when it's not me. Because it's all the same. Numerical base, variable exponent, chain rule. Three chains. Okay? 
And then the third chain is going to be the derivative of the exponent, which is 2x. And they'll often rewrite it as 2x e to the x squared minus 4. So we have already done these. And any derivative, they can ask for the tangent slope, normal slope, tangent line, normal line. Yes? Uh, how, would, how does this question look if you do it through the lens of f prime of g of x times g prime? So your f would be e to the x. Your g prime would be x squared minus 4. You just get that extra lot in there because it is a rule when it happens in this case. Okay. Yeah. Would that give you the same answer? Uh, you'd be missing the lot if you don't use the rule of chains with E. Okay. And yeah. E's are just kind of an exception that we have to know. E's or numerical basis to variable exponents. Yeah. There's a, it's a side note of a chain rule. Yeah. Okay. Four. Find Y prime if y equals sine 4 to e to the x. What did I tell you when you have a numerical, numerical coefficient? It just sits there and you do the derivative of what's beside it, right? And it joins it. That's all that happens when you have a numerical coefficient. Let's try it out. <laughs> so I want to prove to you why a numerical coefficient just sits and you do the derivative beside. Okay? I want to prove as to why that happens. It's because of product rule, actually. So I'm going to do a little caveat up to the side. No, I'm not. Why does it always just get rid of the marker when I pause this? Thing? Annoying. So say I have four, say y equals four, e to the x. Technically, That is 4 times e to the x, is it not? Technically, that's a power rule, is it not? Okay. Now, I said, guys, we can just rewrite it. So we can rewrite our coefficient and then do the derivative of what's behind it. So we can do it every single time. So I told you to do it. So the derivative of e to the x is actually e to the x, ln e times 1, these go away, so it's 4 e to the x. Okay? True statement, because I told you that. So you would do it just because I told you and you blindly believe, which is really nice of you. But why, rather than blindly believing me? Because we can do product rule here. What's the derivative of a 4? Zero, zero. Zero. It's going to get rid of half of the product rule. So if I do product rule with this one, I would get g, f prime, which is 0. Poof, that's gone. And then I'm just repeating that. Plus f g prime. Technically, the whole other side goes away because you're going to get the derivative of a constant or a coefficient, which is a constant. The derivative of a constant is zero. It goes away. So that's why when you have just a plain old coefficient multiplied by something, you can rewrite the coefficient multiplied by the derivative. You have to watch yourself, though, because people will do that all the time when they see a t or an x e to the x. That is not a coefficient. That is a variable. You have to do product rule. Okay. So, for example, this is a constant or a coefficient with a num numeric coefficient times this, correct? But if I gave you x, e to the x, people will do the same thing. They'll do the derivative of this, derivative of this, call it a day. You can't. This and this are multiplied. That is a product rule question. I cannot tell you how many times the biggest error that happens in all of derivative land is when I throw just a variable in front, like an x or a 4x. People will just go and derivative, do the derivative of both of them, call it a day. The answer will be there, you'll pick it, it'll be bad. Okay? Or written response, you'll do it, and it'll be bad. So you have to spot whenever there's two variables touching that that makes a product rule to be embedded in a chain rule, too. All right. So the derivative of this one, y prime, I have to do the outside. So my g, or my f in this case, would be sine x. So I get cos x. x just happens to be 4 e to the x. And then the derivative of 4e to the x is 4. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Ln e. And the derivative of the exponent, which is a 1. Oh, aggressive amount of brackets. It goes away. So my answer would be 4e to the x cos 4e to the x. 
Fancy way of saying first derivative, they could say, well, determine the tangent slope. The first derivative, same answer, same question. All right, next one. What if I could do something? Let's say I could do this. Suppose. Suppose. H equals F open dot G. Now people don't like it because it doesn't have X's. So, sure, let's put an X. H of X equals F of X open dot G of X. <laughs> How else could we rewrite this? Because I don't like it that way. So they're indirectly giving you a chain rule question. You have to spot these. This is chain rule, chain rule, chain rule, chain rule. Okay, so suppose we got this. Find h prime of 1 uh, given that f of 1 equals 2 f prime of 1 equals 1, f prime of 2 equals negative 4, uh, g of 1 equals 2, g prime of 1 equals negative 3, Okay? So, in this case, I'm not giving you what the function is at all. I'm not telling you what f is. I'm not telling you what g is. Correct? I'm giving you h equals f of g of x. You have to spot. Okay, that is f of g of x. That cool. I love this board so much. Wish I had one at home. So this is f of g, correct? That's blatant chain rule. Right? Whenever we have a function embedded in another function, blatant chain rule. Okay. So, I like personally doing this with what? With chains or with x's. I like putting x's in them because I find it looks confusing. So I'm going to go h of x, like I said up there, is f of g of x. We agree? Okay. They want h prime of 1. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with you right now. So I'm going to do this first. So I go h prime of x equals what? What are we going to do? So f of g of x, f prime of g of x, equals, equals, oh my gosh, chain. Help me. What do we multiply behind this? That's technically what we would have, right? What we're doing with a lot. So we have h prime of 1 equals f prime of g of 1 times g prime of 1. Cool. So we have h prime of 1 equals f prime of what? Yeah, this is just a 2. So now I'm looking for f prime of 2. That's my first chain. And g prime of 1 is? Okay, cool. What's f prime of 2? What did I just find? I found the first derivative. True statement. I found h prime of 1, true statement. What did I actually find, though? What is the first derivative? Just another fancy way of saying. Slope. Tangent slope. So I just found the tangent slope of the graph of what? h of x at x equals 1. That's all I did. I just found the tangent slope 
of h of x when x equals one because they could ask for actual like what would be the con like what would be the context to this right that's really what we found okay so I'm going to give you a few questions to work on we're not done but I just want to give you a couple pra AP practice questions that you wouldn't want to know okay AP practice. We're going to practice way more problems tomorrow, but I want you to try just the AP practice ones. These are going to be out of order, so you might want to just... Give me, oh, and this is section 3.1. I forgot to put that. So the AP questions are on page... Oh my gosh. 231. I didn't get through the whole lesson, so it's not going to be all of them. It's going to be a lot, though. Two, three, four. Give me a tiny break here. Well, five, seven. And I want you to just do problem 81. Just because it's one of these. And they do pop up every so often on AP. But we're going to still do the rest of the lesson more on practice a whole bunch more. You just need practice and practice. And now that we have product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule, and power rule, and trig derivatives, I can put them all together. So tomorrow we're just going to practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Practice makes perfect. And I practiced with you because at first they seemed slightly overwhelming because you, not overwhelming, you'll do them wrong. You'll not spot the product rule and the chain rule and the chain rule and the quotient rule and stuff like that.